What is up, guys? Welcome for our Week 12 match of the GBA. I'm uploading this because I, I have to. Tom's been nagging me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I promised Tom that I would get this up, so uh, I know it's quite late. Sorry about that. Uh, I was extremely busy the weekend that Gator, Gator and I ended up playing, uh, which was the same weekend, obviously, that the game was supposed to go up, and um, I didn't end up getting it up in time, but I'm going to get it up for you guys now, just so you guys can see what happened on my side, my commentary and whatnot. Uh, there's going to be no graphics or anything. You guys can see the teams on screen. I brought a very similar team to what I brought the first, uh, first time around, except uh, this time I have Fortress, and last time I don't believe I did. Uh, so Fortress is actually a really cool key asset to this game uh, because with a Salic Berry, uh, it pretty much outspeeds his entire team outside of Crobat uh, once he gets me down to 25, which a lot of his team can do. A lot of his team is geared toward that, uh, especially certain leads like um, like Mamo with, say, HP Fire or uh, Altaria with Flamethrower. So that's exactly what I'm going to lead off with is going to be Fortress. We're going to get right into this match. And uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, prioritize my hazards because uh, getting rid of focus sashes on his team, especially on things like Mamo, is going to be very, very important. We're going to lead off with Alphonse, the Fortress, as he's going to lead off with the Altaria, which is not a cheat. Now, this is actually a recreation, uh, as I did not have uh, my Lopanite. Why is the HP bar at the top so skewed? What the hell's going on? <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me get that back in here. Um... Maybe if I do this, this, no. Nope. All right, well, anyway, you can see uh, you can see his HP up at the top. That's all you really need to see. Nicknames aren't that important. But anyway, uh, we're going to get brought down to our uh, to our sturdy, get our, um, our Salic Berry, as we're going to get up rocks. So I'm going to prioritize rocks here. And now I do have Heavy Slam on this Fortress, but I decide that... Um, that going for the explosion is probably a better idea because you can switch into heavy slam uh, with things like uh, keys and whatever and I don't want to be in with the fortress so I decide to just explode instead. Uh, I'm simultaneously trying to fix my dimensions right now and it's uh, it's not going very well. Uh, maybe if I drag this down, do that, down, and anyway. Uh, so I'm going to go into my Lopany now which does have the Lopanite this time. I had a Soothe Bell initially when we first played. Uh, Alright, so you can see the majority of the screen now, That's uh, that's good. So I'm going to go for the return. Uh, he's going to switch in his Buzzwell, which is a great response to Lopany that he didn't bring the first time uh, and that I really expect it to come. So I'm going to Mega Evolve right here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go for a return because it knocks out the Altaria from where it is. And I uh, don't want the same Altaria shenanigans as last time. Uh, and I'm just going to go for the return. No, no Toxics or anything. I do have a uh, Thunder Wave Encore, I believe, on this thing. Uh, but I'm going to get off a big chunk with a crit return on his Buzzwall. I see that it does over half, so I don't think he's absolute max Fizz Def. And uh, I'm going to get out of here. I know he has Roost. I'm going to switch into my Zapdos. Trying to bait in the Mamoswine, essentially, because I do have something for the Mamoswine that I had planned uh, the first time that we played that I didn't end up exactly bringing the same set uh, when we actually had the match. So, I know he's not going to stay in with his Buzzwall. I could have Air Cutter. Thunderbolt's going to do a lot. Heat Wave's also an option. So, and I know he's going to go into his Mamo, so I'm going to get some momentum here, and I'm going to go for U-Turn. All six of his Mons are still alive. He brings in Habol, the, uh, the Mamo Swine. We're going to get off some Chip with the U-Turn right here, and uh, I'm going to bring in my Trump card for this game, which is going to be my Barbarical. And my bar Barbarical is sitting on an Air Balloon. So that means that his Mamoswine can't hit me super effectively. Best thing it can hit me with is Freeze Dry, essentially, if he's decided to carry it, but I very much doubt it considering my team. He's going to switch out. I'm going to get off a free Shell Smash as he goes into his full HP Buzzwall, which I ended up calcing uh, way back in like week four. Uh, that Aerial Ace from Tough Claws plus two Adamant um, Barbarical actually does knock out a max defense Buzzwall after rocks and leftovers. So it's actually, the mineral is like 93, so it'd be very unlikely for me not to knock him out. Uh, so we're gonna go for the air lace, and uh, this Buzzwall is gonna go straight down, and I'm still sitting on my air balloon, so he cannot revenge me with his Mamoswine. Now, the reason that I brought a, um, that I consider bringing a Lumberry set the first week, oh Rico, I'm watching Ma Made in Abyss right now. Uh, the reason that I first, uh, that I decided to bring a, uh, uh, or that I thought about bringing Lumberry was because of this thing's Thunder Wave. And as you can see, he does get off a of Thunder Wave. Otherwise, uh, if he didn't have Thunder Wave, if he had uh, Toxic like the first time, Barbarical would have straight swept through his team. Like, legit, everything would have died. Uh, as you can see, we do get a crit on the Clef Key. I'm not 100% sure if that mattered. It only mattered if he was max defense. I think I saw his team builder and he wasn't absolute max, so, um, so I don't think that mattered. 
and uh, he brings in the uh, Mamoswine minus one, uh, minus one defense now. He's going to go for a knockoff. Luckily, we do not get full para on this turn. We're going to go down to 32 HP as our air balloon is going to pop. I'm going to go for the liquidation, and we are going to get rid of the Mamoswine. So three kills for Barbarical. Amazing. Uh, first time that it actually ended up uh, pulling off a sweep. I tried to bring a sweeper Barbarical twice, and other Pokemon ended up doing the job uh, instead, except in the first week against Gator, of course. Uh, as we uh, we did end up losing because we missed the toxic so he's gonna go for a brave bird with his uh, crowbat obviously he's uh, He's faster than me because I'm paralyzed and I have the minus one defense So this is gonna be an easy KO for his crowbat barbarical finally goes down. Thank you Jiraiya for your awesome work this week Really appreciate it. He's gonna get some black sludge I see that he's not choice or anything so I'm gonna go into Chise Zapdos and uh, He's actually gonna go for a taunt on this turn I end up going for a toxic because I did expect to switch into his Flygon uh, on this turn predicting a Thunderbolt now obviously I could go for HP ice because his last three mons are all weak to it uh, But I did reveal a U-turn so I thought maybe he might think that I don't have HP ice and he might go straight into Flygon I'm gonna get out of here uh, as actually no I'm gonna stay in as he goes for a toxic I end up going for a U-turn because again I don't want the Flygon coming in for free because I know how much of a threat it is to my team So I'm just gonna go for the U-turn and I'm gonna bring in my Scallopede because I want to bait the Brave Bird Scallopede's Water EMZ this week with uh, with Aqua Tail uh, because it really matched up well against this team in general and I'm gonna bring in uh, Scalpine and I'm gonna switch right back out into my uh, into my Zapdos because I want to get this thing static potentially as uh, he's just gonna go for a Brave Bird on the turn that I switch and uh, I don't get the static on this turn which is fine because uh, ultimately I'm just gonna be clicking a Thunderbolt on the following turn because I can see that Gator doesn't want to switch out his Crobat he clearly just wants to stay in here and let it go down so that he can get the flag on in for free uh, as opposed to having it come in on a turn that I U-turn or Toxic. So, uh, that's a very good play on his part. But I am going to knock out the Crobat on this following turn with a Thunderbolt, as Gator decides to taunt me once again. He doesn't want me going for any kind of status on his, uh, on his Flygon. So he's, uh, he's going to go for Taunt, and uh, I end up calcing uh, plus one Outrage to my, uh, to my uh, Zapdos around this turn, and I see that it doesn't knock me out. So I know that when he goes into Flygon, I'm going to get in my Mudsdale and I'm going to be able to roar out the Flygon and come back in with my Zapdos later and have two chances to status his, uh, his Flygon. One with the Outrage on my, on my Static and the second one with my Toxic. So unless both fail, uh, I'm going to be able to deal with the Flygon quite effectively. So I'm going to switch out here. I'm going to go straight. Uh, I'm actually going to U-turn to get some chip first. Uh, as I know that if he just clicks uh, Drag uh, Dragonium, he doesn't get the boost in speed, so that's fine with me. Uh, as I'm going to click U-turn, I'm going to get on out of here. I'm going to chip this thing for about 20%, and uh, or roughly 16-ish. Uh, and I'm going to go into my Mudsdale. I know that Mudsdale can play uh, take a plus one Devastating Drake from Flygon. It does about 75 to, to 85. And uh, he's going to show the Z-move right here. And I'm going to roar it out. I don't want this thing in right now with a speed boost because that's very, very bad for me. Uh, it means that I have to basically play uh, tactics with my Scallopede. I do have Protect on Scally, uh, but I don't want to have to play those games around him potentially Dragon Dancing again. Uh, and I want to waste the Z-move. So I'm going to go into Mudsdale and I'm going to go for the... The roar on this turn, as you can see, we do live the attack, we get our stamina boost, and uh, I'm going to roar him out, and his last remaining mons are this Flygon and his Altaria, uh, so I'm going to spam Heavy Slam against the Altaria, and Gator's going to kind of pull the same move as he did in the last time we played him, which is, he's going to sack his Altaria to have last mon Flygon, the last mon setup mon. Uh, this time, however, the fact that I kept my Zapdos out of range of Outrage means that I'll be able to uh, to deal with it so long as I don't miss Toxic or I don't get the Static. So I'm just going to spam Heavy Slam here if ever he decides to attack me. I've seen that he's special because he went for a, uh, a Flamethrower on turn 1. Uh, he ends up going for Heal Bell. Obviously, it doesn't do anything. Nothing is statist. And I'm going to get end up getting rid of the Altaria on this turn with another Heavy Slam. I can't roar out his Flygon anymore, but I know that if I bring in my Zapdos hard on his Dragon Dance, I'll be fine because I can click either Toxic or uh, I can get the Static from his Outrage. The only situation in where this fails is he has Stone Edge for my Zapdos, in which case I will go straight down as it's stronger than Outrage. Uh, and he can also deal with my Scallopede that way because it's super effective. So that would be pretty bad. Uh, but then he still has to play games around my uh, my Protect with Scallopede because Waterium uh, takes this thing out from like 60 and I believe he's sitting at about uh, 75. Uh, so it, it's still it's still mind games. I don't have Fake Out on Lop anybody. He obviously has to think about that. I'm gonna go for Outrage. I'm gonna live on 13. I'm gonna get the Static, which is amazing for me. And I'm gonna end up going for the Toxic on this turn. 
uh, as uh, obviously that fails. And I believe my Zapdos ends up being faster than his uh, plus one paralyzed Flygon. I'm gonna get off the U-turn and put this thing in guaranteed range of the uh, the Water EMZ. Uh, as Zapdos actually ends up living on one uh, from the Toxic. I'm gonna get off the U-turn, this thing is at 50. He would have to Dragon Dance again, and in which case, he can't really take hits from uh, my... Mudsdale, uh, and I have I do have Heavy Slam, which does hit this thing quite hard. Uh, so he can't, unless he has Roost, he can't really deal with it. So he's gonna go for the Outrage. I'm gonna go straight down, but now he is paralyzed, and uh, my Scalipede is indeed faster uh, than his Flygon. Uh, turns out that I uh, I didn't speed creep adamant uh, max speed flygon which he ended up running so I, had I not gotten the paralysis I would have had to play protect games and wait until uh, the toxic wore him out so this would have been a lot closer match but it ends up being a 3-0 I believe in my favor I still had Lopany in the back and uh, what was the other one <laughs> I can't even remember remember now but I know Mudsdale went down I know um, my uh, my barbarical went down uh, might have been a 4-0. Uh, no, my Fortress went down as well. So yeah, I had Scalipede, Zapdos still alive, and Lopany in the back. So it was a 3-0 uh, indeed. So 3-0 win over Gator. We end up f finishing the season with a 5-7 and seven record, which realistically, honestly, looking at uh, some of the things that didn't go my way this season, I'm not too upset uh, about the way that I played. Uh, I was Jolt's only loss uh, that wasn't a rematch. So there's that. Um... Considering the Jolt is one of the strongest players in the league, I'm, I'm very proud of that. Like, honestly, that I started off the season really stupidly, um, and I was... I, I'll explain it a little bit. I'm not trying to make excuses or anything, but um, I hadn't played league format since the D-League, and if you guys remember, my D-League team was extremely defensive. I had the Cress Umbreon core, uh, and uh, as well as the Metagross, and that team incurred a lot of switching, uh, a lot of switching around on my opponent's threats, because I could... I could I was able to do that. This team that I drafted was not capable of doing that at all. It was not capable of switching around on threats. Uh, so as a result, uh, I my first two weeks I really messed up because I was trying to check things defensively when I should, should have been trying to check them offensively. And that's why I lost so bad to MV and Chimp. I'm not saying that I would have won both games. Uh, I'm not even saying that I would have won one, but they would have been much closer scores and I would have had a much better uh, outlook into the rest of the season if they were only like, for, for example, 1-0 or 2-0 losses. Had I really played my team the way that it was designed to play, uh, or the way that it uh, the Mons worked, uh, the, basically if I had taken an offensive approach into the first two weeks of the season, I think I would have had a much better outlook on the rest of the season, and really played my team correctly and made the correct transactions as well. Uh, one big, uh, big misstep on my part, I feel, was uh, transacting Decidueye after D week one, because what Lopany and Scalopede and all of my offensive threats really want is momentum into them and as a result I was forced to run U-turn or Volt Switch almost every week on Zapdos which I was bringing as a defensive check uh, so it took up a move slot where I would have otherwise liked a different move uh, and as well my only other U-turner was uh, was Darmanitan as you guys can see as soon as I picked up Fortress my record improved because I was able to have that option of momentum even though I didn't bring it I still had the option uh, and I, I, I felt a lot more comfortable playing with a team that had offensive momentum as opposed to something that was just forced to switch in on offensive threats when it couldn't. So I'm not going to make the same mistake next season. I know what my problem in drafting was. I don't think my, my problem was as far in play as it was in drafting uh, and, the, and, and the mindset that I went into the season with uh, as a result. So... Uh, I think I'm going to be much better off next time around. Uh, we are sticking around for Season 9, obviously. I'm looking very much forward to it. Uh, the D-League's coming back as well uh, for Season 4, so that should be interesting. Really uh, excited to see what, what coaches are going to be making it uh, this uh, this time around. Uh, some some returning ones as well, so I'm excited for those. So yeah, that's uh, that's the wrap-up for the season, guys. There's not much more to say. Uh, I, I did enjoy myself regardless. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to get up every single video, even though this one's late, uh, and a lot of them were, uh, were like a day late or whatever, but uh, we had some problems with scheduling this season that I hope will be avoided for next season, uh, and everybody will be able to get their uh, their games up on time, So because um, I, I know I wasn't the only one with late games up. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's it, guys. If you guys did enjoy our first run in the GBA main league, 
Uh, make sure to leave a like for us down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of us next season. I am currently playing in the NPL. If you're still catching that, then thank you very much. If you haven't checked out those games yet, definitely go and do so. I'm doing much better in the NPL than I am in the G than I did in the GBA. So uh, if you guys want to go and see some actual good results, then definitely go and check that out. Not that this one wasn't a good result. 3-0 is always, uh, obviously a very good score over Gator. Very proud of that one. But yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, again, thank you so much for, for watching this season. Hope to see most of you back next season, and I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.